G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my 2021 NRL St. George Illawarra Dragon season review now. The image here shows one of the key players of their side, obviously joining the Bulldogs next year in Paul Vaughan. His contract terminated due to a barbecue after the game, which I'll speak about against the Warriors later in the season, which this side was very underrated. We expected them to be a, a bottom two or even a bottom four, if you want to say, side. This side was playing like a top eight side. I actually think for the most part, going off the start of the year, the Dragons had a good year. When he's speaking about the good and the bad, sit back, get your sausages out, and let's have a barbecue. Well, in the first round of the season, the Dragons went down to the Sharks, 32-18 to at home. They followed it up with a win against the Sea Eagles, a nice little win here. A great game from their new player, Daniel Alvaro, 25 points to 18 in front of the Cowboys in Townsville. They flogged the Sea Eagles, who at this point were playing horribly. And you know what? The Dragons, they were on a roll. They were in a win streak because they won again with a charge down Tarek Sims. A fantastic game against the Newcastle Knights on, I think it may have been Easter in round four, but don't quote me on it. And the following week, I was actually invited to uh, watch the Eels run on the field against the Dragons. And uh, I will never forget this game because the Dragons flogged the Eels 26 points to 12. They played very, very good. They look like a very good side. Could they keep up that win record against a team who you could call them the bogey team? Their first loss uh, in that after that streak in round six against the Warriors, 20 points to 14 once again at home. There were some tough shoes to fill at the Dragons, a big one being Cameron McInnes, who was basically out for the entire season. In round eight, they lost to the Tigers, 16 points to eight at Wollongong. The home record this year, I believe, wasn't great. They lost the annual SCG Anzac Day match against the Roosters, 34 to 10. Uh, Jack Bird, one of their new recruits, thought he was pretty good in that game. Um, but in the end, the Roosters just were too good, classy. Flogged the Bulldogs, who were starting the season absolutely shocking, which I've spoken about previously. 32 point to 12 win. Magic round, they lost 44 18 to the Storm, but I tell you what, they were right in this contest. This game, they had it by the fingertips, but Dragons, typical choke. And in the second half, Melbourne run over the top of them, even after Pappenhausen was gone. Uh, this was during the crackdowns. So I think there was at least two players from this game sent off. The following week, I thought they played so good, the Dragons, so I tipped them against the Sharks. They ended up losing it in one of the least... It was a shit game, this game, in round 11. Sharks and Dragons, 13 to 12. So boring. They were flogged by the Tigers in round 12, 34 to 18. And in round 13, they scored the most points of the season against the Brisbane Broncos, conceding 24 points and scoring 52 at Cogra in quite an entertaining game. The following week, I don't know what got into the Dragons here at Suncorp, at, not Suncorp, at Stadium Australia. I went to this one and the Bulldogs got their second win of the season, 28-6 to over the Dragons. Well, they were losing games consistently, but they were just staying inside the top eight based on that win streak start that they had. And the Dragons came into the game against the Rabbitohs in round, uh, sorry, against the Raiders in round 15. And I tell you what, fantastic game. It was a come from behind for the Dragons to end up winning in the match, 22 points to 20. I actually think this probably is their best victory of the year. I know they only won the game by two points, and you can say that they blew Brisbane out of the water, but a very, very gutsy performance for the Dragons, especially with um, some of their players being out due to injury, and well, some players were about to be out the following week. Round 16, the Dragons come from behind to beat the Warriors, 19 points to 18. Cody Ramsey scores pretty much on the siren. And uh, they have a bye in round 17, which works out well as they are in a lot of trouble after Paul Vaughan invites his teammates over for a barbecue during a biosecurity breach, lockdowns everywhere uh, in the state and, and breaking the rules. I'm not going to speak about my opinion of the situation, but 
There is no doubt that this ruined the Dragons' season and any chance of finals hopes. In round 18, they were beaten by Manly, 32 points to 18. I could be wrong, but I think Tom Trevojevic may have actually been out for the game. They were beaten 32 to 10 at Seabus Super Stadium. The games were moved to Queensland, that one against the Titans. Conceded 50 at Suncorp Stadium. Beaten by the Canberra Raiders, they get revenge. 20 points to 12. Dragons fought hard in this game, but not enough in the end. Thought the Dragons were okay against Penrith. Penrith won the game 34 to 16. The Roosters put 40 on them. The Woes just continued. But their worst loss of the season comes in round 24. A 38 to 26 loss to the Cowboys where they led at halftime 20 to 10. This side's defense just went to sleep and it's definitely their worst performance. A very dark day in the hearts of Dragons fans. They almost pick up the victory in round 25, but the runners-up, the South Sydney Rabbitohs, get the victory 20-16 to 16 at Sunshine Coast, um, even though the Rabbitohs had a lot of players out. So that's their season. Well, he was back to some of his best. The captain, Ben Hunt, had an outstanding season, scoring five tries in 15 appearances. He had 13 try assists with 27 offloads, 260 tackles made and 1,500 run metres. Without a doubt, the player of the year, in my opinion, at the St. George Illawarra Dragons. As for the other players, their new recruit, Jack Bird, started off in the back row, moved to the centres. He scored uh, six, four tries in the 2021 season in 22 appearances. He kicked six goals, made 83 tackle breaks, seven try assists. His missed tackles were 64, but ran for over 2,000 metres, so... For his first year as a Dragon. I thought he had a pretty good season, Jack Bird. And I want to speak about the young gun. I'm just trying to find his stats. Here he is, Tyrell Sloan, filling in the shoes for Matt Dufty. Five appearances, six tries, two try assists, two line breaks, 13 tackle breaks, 52 tackles made and 500 run metres. He is an underrated little superstar. I can't wait to see more of Tyrell Sloan. Looking forward to seeing more of him in 2022. He was up there with Ben Hunt in regards to the way that he plays and especially the effort that he puts in. Okay, so there's a lot of young talent coming through the club and I'm not too keen for next year for the Dragons, but I guess I said the same thing uh, this time last year. They have recruited George Burgess from Wigan Warriors uh, until 2023. Jack Jojeski from the Sea Eagles has signed on for the year. Moses Embai from the West Tigers. Really don't know if this is the right move when you're trying to replace Corey Norman. Tatu uh, Moga, who has had a good stint at both the Rabbits and the Knights for 2022. Francis Molo, the young origin gun uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, Jaden Sewer from the Rabbitohs, really nice signing. Aaron Woods has recently signed on a deal. And Moses Suley till 2024. So look, I, I don't know, but I have to, I can't not think short term. This is a short term option rather than long term. And I think the Dragons are a little bit underrated going into next year. I don't think too much of them personally, but I think that Anthony Griffith's got something under his sleeve in regards to, say, one, two years for the Dragons to be really good. And we'll wait and see if it happens. Gerard Beale has been released. Adam Clune heads to the Knights. You've got Matt Dufty heading to the Bulldogs. McInnes, we all know, heads to the Sharks. Norman has been released. Paul Paul Vaughan joins the Bulldogs. And Cody Ramsey and Tyrell Fumianu has re-signed for 2024. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Comment what you thought of the St. George Illawarra Dragons season. And I'll see you guys next time.